everybody uh, afternoon now for uh, for me I hope you guys are all doing fantastic and uh, welcome to saving time with Microsoft Word templates so it uh, looks like we got, we got a great group here I'm, I'm seeing uh, 74 uh, individuals so you know, 73 that is fantastic um, and uh, I'm very happy to be here with you guys I'm going to give you a quick little uh, intro about myself and a couple things about New Horizons and we'll dig in okay all right so uh, this is me uh, senior applications instructor at New Horizons I'm out of the Boston Mass area uh, Adobe certified expert uh, MCT Microsoft certified trainer uh, Moss uh, all that stuff um, probably most importantly I'm doing what I love as I, I've been teaching for over 20 years uh, taught for Clark University American International College up here in New England and um, uh, been with New Horizons for about a year and a half. So, and uh, uh, certainly a Microsoft user, personally and professionally, for uh, pretty much 20 plus years as well. So, uh, and as you guys know, there's 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 no more prolific software on the planet than Microsoft Word. Um, so I love these. I love this idea. I teach I teach these full classes uh, all day. And I love this idea of these uh, very kind of targeted um, uh, little webinars. Uh, the main objective, of course, is to open some doors, uh, maybe, again, create some awareness. Um, we're not, uh, there are certain areas, obviously, that have, you know, rabbit holes that uh, we could spend an entire half hour easily just on one little piece. Uh, so. My biggest objective <clears throat> is to really uh, can create some awareness, some understanding uh, of templates, uh, how they can be used, how they can make yourself uh, more efficient. And guys, it's all about time. You know that um, efficiency, productivity. I mean, those are the things that everybody's concerned about. Uh, employees, employers. So anytime we can we can be more productive and more efficient, that's usually a pretty good thing. Okay. So that's uh, kind of our primary objective, and a couple quick things. Um, our agenda again: Who is New Horizons? Got a couple slides, real quick. Uh, presentation slash demo, and um, uh, as Anthony mentioned, as far as the Q and A, because we're so limited in time. The questions have to come in through Anthony, then they get to me, and then they kind of go back through. Um, and we would literally, especially with this many people, um, maybe even be able to get to one or two questions. So I've given you my email address. I'm going to give it out again at the end. Okay. So to actually be able to give you a better opportunity, um, should we finish and you have some things you want to clarify, you you kind of really want to ask on. Um, I am absolutely happy uh, to provide my email address uh, for you guys to be able to reach out uh, to me directly. Okay, So I think we'll be able to uh, focus on the information and then you've still got a, an avenue to be able to, uh, to clarify anything. Okay, Alright, so New Horizons, real quick. I'm a teacher, not a salesperson, uh, but we certainly want uh, you to know kind of what we're about. Uh, we are a global company, um, literally offices all over the world, uh, 2,100 classrooms, 2,400 instructors in 56 countries around the world, uh, 3 million students a day of training per year. Um, I think the most important thing next is the modality. We actually have a lot of flexibility in terms of how we offer classes. We have instructor-led classes, your traditional, come to the center, sit in the classroom, instructors there, they can walk around and, uh, and engage, and that's, that's great. Um, but obviously for flexibility, the online live has become huge. Um, I teach those as well, and uh, they're, they're great from the perspective of obviously you can be anywhere. People uh, take them from home, people take them from work. Uh, but you still have an instructor. It's still live. You can actually see the instructor through a video feed. You got chat uh, back and forth. 
So it is an actual live class where you can uh, communicate and engage with the instructor and ask questions. Uh, and then, of course, uh, private if the company uh, has the facility and desire to meet you, uh, which is which is great. So a lot of ways to be able to uh, to access the learning. And again, hopefully today you learned some things. That's enough for you. Fantastic. Okay. No no obligation to go any further. But if it opens uh, you know up some thoughts and you know like to take it further and realize that there's maybe a lot more, uh, the classes are there for you. Okay. Uh, vendors obviously is huge. If if there's a major player out there, we're connected with them. Um, I mean that's kind of a who's who right there uh, of all the major uh, vendors and players. Uh, we have relationships with them, which is great. All right, so into the stuff. All right, uh, so what is a template? Bottom line, a template is just a, a pattern or model uh, that other documents are based on. Very simple. I'm not going to spend any time on that. All right. Now, in the classroom, when I can actually do polling, I always like to ask this question: Who uses templates? And you know, invariably, I get some hands go up, some don't go up. Um, and the key point is why? Why is this important? Because everyone uses templates. Okay. As a matter of fact, you cannot work in Word without a template. Okay. It's impossible. It's impossible to open up a document without a template. And for a lot of people, that's that's kind of an eye opener. Okay. So we certainly want to look at uh, what can we do to expand on that, and that, that's our focus. But understanding that uh, templates are absolutely there, universal, uh, is, is a key point. And we're going to speak to a little bit kind of what that default template is, okay? because that's also important because that can be modified as well. Okay? Now, um, a quick comment on file extensions because this does tie into templates as well. Okay? And again, some of you are probably very well aware of this, but in 2007, Microsoft made a significant change to its underlining code structure for all of its files. Right? So we went from DOC to DOCX, XLS to XLSX, and PPT to PPTX. Right? Uh, the X stands for XML. Uh, so all of the files are XML based, lots of benefits. Well, this also connects and ties into templates as well. Okay? There's one more change that I want to make sure everybody's aware of that again ties into templates. And it has to do with macros. Okay? So prior to 2007, you had no idea if a macro was in the file until you opened it. Maybe security kicked in, maybe it didn't. Okay. Well, Microsoft made the decision to make a new extension for the macro. So we have a .docm, which is a macro-enabled file. So if you have a macro and you go to save it, and you save it with the X extension, that macro is gone. It cannot live in that file anymore, which is, which is great from a security standpoint. Well, the same principle applies to your templates. Okay? One of the cool things that you can do with templates is you can save macros in the templates and then create files from that which are going to inherit that macro. So if you save a template, you have your dot dot okay x and then you have a dot dot m as well and that's very important so if you create a template that has a macro it has to be saved with the macro enabled template extension okay so important detail all right now global versus document templates an important point there are two global templates by default, and only one of them, you'll hear the term technically the only true global template, and that is normal. Okay? The normal template, which is every time you open up Word and go File, New, 
and open up a blank document or just launch Word which launches a blank document. You have just created a document based on the normal template. Okay? Every single time. So that is the only true global template. The other thing that's considered a global template <coughs> um, has to do with the uh, building blocks. Okay? Now again, I'm, I'm sure many of you have used building blocks. Okay? There is a building blocks template as well. When you launch the document, that building blocks template is waiting in the background. If you don't use building blocks, it doesn't kick in. Okay? So it's, it's kind of there. If you utilize the building blocks, then the building blocks template becomes attached. Okay? And that's the term that Microsoft uses. The templates are attached to the file. Okay? That's going to come into play because we're going to look at, well, how do you attach templates? What if you had a, a document that had a template attached and you wanted to attach a new template or a different template to it? And you can do that. Okay? So templates are attached. Now the other is your document templates. And those are the things that we create. And the, the, the real big difference there is document templates only affect the documents that are based on that template. Okay? That's the only thing that's going to be changed or altered. Okay? Uh, a last key point here, uh, again, big picture, is opening templates versus creating a file from the template. And that, that really creates a big gotcha for a lot of people when they first start working on it. Uh, if you have a template and you go file open from Word, you're going to open up the template for editing, which is certainly something you're going to want to do at times. Okay? But you're not going to create a document from the template. And again, that can, that can obviously cause some problems if somebody's desire is to you know, use that template for a new document and they accidentally open up the template, um, that, could, that could be a disaster. Okay? So file open and right click open are going to actually open up the template. Okay? If you double click on a template, you are going to create a new document from the template. Okay? So if you browse at a template, double click it, that's what's going to happen. Okay? So that's a, that's a key point there. All right, now, this really speaks to, I think, the heart of what we're talking about, time. Okay? Um, what can we store in templates? Well, you can store text. So if we have a, a document that has information that we want to utilize, and maybe pieces of the information are going to change, and this could be a one page, this could be a 50 page document. Okay? And there are certain pieces that maybe we're going to alter, but we don't want to have to reproduce all of that. But we want that consistency and we want that link to a template instead of just file, open, save as, which we probably all know can be a, also a, uh, uh, a problem. Okay? That's backfired many times. Doing a file, open, make some changes, meant to do a save as, accidentally save, happens all the time. Okay? So any amount of text that you want to put in there, that can be your starting point. Uh, forms can be stored in templates, letterhead, memos, margin settings, uh, page orientation, okay? things that you don't want to have somebody have to remember or deal with okay? each time they go to create a particular uh, unusual or not normal layout. Uh, templates are obviously huge for branding. Uh, which just about every medium to large co size company is is very invested in. Um, we're just we're talking about consistency, right? Good old consistency, All right? Uh, logos, of course, uh, is part of the company. Uh, we talked earlier about the, the fact that macros uh, can be stored in templates, uh, building blocks, document property field codes, um, keyboard shortcuts. Um, I'll go over that real quickly as, as kind of just a 
quick little side note. Uh, I find a lot of people don't know either that you can change the keyboard shortcuts or where to go to change the keyboard shortcuts. And it's, uh, it's pretty easy, uh, as long as you know where to go, to actually modify the keyboard shortcuts. Okay? Uh, and here's the big one. Here's truly the big one for me, uh, styles. Okay? Now, if you talk to just about any instructor, and I think probably most power users of Word, they would agree that if you had to pick one single thing that you really truly wanted to understand, maybe even master and, and, and really, really get strong on, uh, it would be styles. Uh, arguably the single most important thing in Microsoft Word. Um, I actually read an article where somebody wrote uh, not basing templates on styles and, and, and rather using uh, what's called manual formatting uh, would be uh, cruel and inhuman punishment. Um, and, and I just, I, I, I had to laugh at it. And it's, but to a degree it's true. Uh, styles are at the heart of, of Word and really should be at the heart of templates. Okay, uh, Doing things based on manual overrides is very inefficient and oftentimes will have the opposite effect of what you're trying to accomplish, which is the consistency. So we'll, we're going to tie in a, a couple things with styles. Uh, that would be a, a, an awesome, by the way, another great little uh, webinar, just really digging into uh, some of the cool things with styles. Okay? All right. Now, this is where I'm going to start to kind of break off here. Uh, I'm going to show you the concept uh, on the line, but then I'm going to jump into Word and uh, try to take most of these and uh, show you kind of what we're talking about. Because I don't want to just do pure slides. I want you guys to kind of see what's going on a bit. So uh, built-in templates. Okay. So let me do a quick minimize here. Open up Microsoft Word. And this, believe it or not, uh, is probably one of the most underutilized features uh, in Microsoft products. Okay? So if you open up Word and go to File New, and same thing in Excel, same thing in PowerPoint, there are dozens to hundreds of built-in templates waiting for you, just created and waiting for you uh, to utilize. And, and this in some ways one of the easiest ways to start utilizing templates to save time. Okay? This is something that I generally task any student that I teach, you know, sit down, do it on the weekend, do it at night, do it some point, do it, you know, do it during work if it makes sense. Okay? Sit down and just go through and make some mental notes of what's here. Okay? There's two things I generally look at or, or try to focus on. One is, of course, never reinvent the wheel. Okay? Um, you'd be hard-pressed to find any type of document that you've got to create that is not in here. Okay? That's either almost identical to what you need or certainly close to what you need. Okay? So some of these have individual some of them have folders within folders. Okay? You go into it and there's multiple folders within that folder. And like I said, there's just there are so many. Um, the other cool thing is reverse engineering. Uh, templates oftentimes have advanced features, advanced functionality, uh, especially if any of you are into Excel. Okay, what an awesome way. You open up a template, it's got all kinds of advanced formulas and functions going on. Um, it's a fantastic way to kind of reverse engineer and, and be able to see what's happening there. Okay? So these are really as simple as getting in here, clicking, uh, finding one uh, that's got what you're looking for or close to what you're looking for, um, and and utilizing it. Okay? So pretty straightforward and that is one easy way okay all right now this <laughs> this next line item uh, 
we could we could get a group of uh, individuals in here and probably spend an hour just on the debate of doing this. It's very important to understand that you can edit and modify the normal template. There are absolutely pros and cons. Okay, so I'm not here to tell you yes you should change this, no you should not change it. I want to show you how to change it and I will speak to some of the gotchas because there are. There are definitely some gotchas with doing that. Okay. So the, the first thing is, is really to understand, well, how do, I, how do I get to the normal template? How do I actually get there? Well, one of the kind of odd things about the normal template is the normal template is a hidden file and, and on two levels. In a Windows operating system, the standard user actually wouldn't even see the folder that it's eventually going to be in unless they've changed their settings to show hidden files and folders. Okay, So that, that's kind of one thing. Um, and then the template itself uh, is remains hidden until it's actually been modified and then you'll actually see the template show up. Okay, So it's kind of one of those odd things. But if you go in Word to File to your Options, okay, and I'll, I'll kind of say this so if somebody is taking notes or did want to write down, they just want to jot down where you would go, File Options to Advanced. And you're going to scroll to the very bottom. And you're going to see a little tab that says File Locations. Okay. And we'll come back here. We'll come back here for another reason as well. Okay, but there's your user templates right there. User templates. And if I click on modify, here's a great way to be able to get that path. By the way, if I click on modify, okay, I can actually backtrack it. But if I click the folder on the very left, it writes the path in there for me which is a, a Windows thing. So now I could actually just copy that, open up my browser explorer, and paste. And there it is. So I'm in my C drive, users, my name, the actual user, application data, roaming, Microsoft templates, and there is normal.dotm. And by the way, note that normal.dotm is a macro-enabled template by default, which means that the normal template can actually hold macros as well. Okay, So there it is. There's your path. I could double-click and open this. And now <laughs> here's the power and here's, here's what you got to understand. If you do that, okay, any changes that you make will affect every single new document that you create okay, in, in Word. Okay? So you go file new, uh, whatever changes you've made are going to be reflected. Okay? But again, some people find that to be uh, a, a good workflow that works for them. Okay? Most people will say there's better options and better ways. Okay, to go about that, especially because of the gotchas. Well, <clears throat> kind of tying into that, I want to show you another gotcha that relates to normal. Okay, so I'm going to close all this out, <clears throat> and I've launched Microsoft Word. So I'm sitting here with Document One. I haven't saved it yet, but we know now it's based on normal. Okay. And you can actually find that out a number of ways. Okay? Um, <clears throat> one way to find that out, if you have the developer tab, which is not on by default, by the way, guys. You can, most of you probably know that. Uh, Microsoft products have a developer tab, and that developer tab is off by default. Okay? You need to go into your customize the ribbon and just click it. That's all you got to do. Check the developer tab, it then becomes available. 
And on the Developer tab under Document Template, it will tell you right there what template is attached to that file. Okay, we'll come back here to actually attach something different. Okay, so that's one way. And the keyboard shortcut, if you have the Developer tab, is Alt L U. Alt followed by and don't you don't hold down the alt just click the alt which brings up the the code and the taskbar the L key followed by the U key and that will get you right back there as well okay so here's what happens okay styles as I said are a huge huge part of the efficiency of Word as well as the efficiency of templates. I've got my styles up here, okay, in my in my bar. If I were to right click, and I'm going to take normal, by the way, which is the one of the default fonts. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go modify. Okay. And I'm going to change this to Berlin Sands. Okay. Well Here's the key down here. At the very bottom, there is an only in this document, and there is a new document based on this template. Now again, this can be a very helpful, very powerful option, but without knowing what's happening behind the scenes, it can also get you in trouble too. So if I say new document based on this template, well, it's not exactly clear that it's going to modify the template. Okay? So if I say okay, okay. Now I want you to watch. I'm not even going to save this document. Okay? I'm going to close it and I'm not going to save it. Okay? And I'm going to go launch Word again. And there's my normal with Berlin Sands. Okay? By modifying my style and choosing that checkbox there, okay? choosing new document based on this template, it is changing the template. Okay? So I just modified the normal template, which means every new document is going to change based on that. Okay? All right, so that's part of how the modification of your styles uh, ties in and hooks into it, okay? All right, so modifying normal by opening the normal and also by literally changing the styles and then choosing that, okay? Now, here's a really key point. I, I, want, I want to really drive this idea home. A very common technique, I'm going to change this back by the way really quick, a very common technique would be to make the template by opening up a Word document and then going File Save As Template. You can imagine that makes a lot of sense, right? I want a template, okay, but here's the gotcha the possible gotcha. You've just created a template that's based on normal. Now, think about that for a second. You've created a template, okay, but that template was based on the normal template because that's what the document was based on. So that means that if we get some modification or if normal has been modified, okay, you could end up getting more than you bargained for. You could end up having some things you did not expect in there. So what Microsoft and what most people would recommend is going this route. Okay, going to File New and above these Office templates that we looked at earlier, all of these choices, okay, there is a My Templates over here. And in there, there is Blank Document. Okay, and the option in the bottom right is create new and you switch it to template. Okay, so what's got the difference here 
is you're going to get a new blank template based on Microsoft factory defaults, not based on the normal template. Okay. Now, again, that's something that if you know if normal hasn't changed, that there's been nothing, that could end up really not being a significant difference, but it could be a significant difference. Okay. So these personal templates, uh, again, live in that uh, that special location, and one of those is blank document. Okay. So choose it. Choose template and you've created a template based on factory defaults. Okay? All right. Uh, certainly the other very common technique would be, hey, I've got a document already. It's maybe a page, it's five pages, it's 50 pages. Um, it's already got all of this content in there, and I want to be able to... Uh, I want to be able to create, okay, based on that. So that would be the other technique, right? So that would be your save as. File save as, kick it in, you're good to go, okay? Now two other real quick, creating style set templates, creating work group, work group templates, okay? Now style set templates I absolutely love. These, these are honestly one of my favorites. Because what you're really doing is you're creating a template that is kind of locked down specific styles. And, and that really is the concept here. What I want to show you real quick is a little bit of a gotcha in terms of generating those styles. So in Microsoft Word, across the top here, these are your styles. Okay? But if you click the little chip in the bottom right okay, and open that up, Okay. you're going to see a much more substantial list of styles here. Well, the ideal key thing that you want to remember is just because it's in this list does not mean it's up here in the styles. And if it's up here in the styles, you may not want it to be. So how do you get them? You right click up here and you remove from quick style gallery. Okay? So if my goal was to create a template that had a very specific set of styles available, I wanted somebody to go in, create a document, and this is it. This is your header, this is your header two, this is these are what I want you to be able to choose from, okay? Then I would go and do some house cleaning. Right click remove from quick style. Right click, remove from quick style. Okay? And what's going to happen is this list is going to start to get narrowed. Okay? And you can see that it's starting to whittle down. I don't even have a drop down anymore. That one's gone. That one's gone. Okay? So now I've only got six styles up here. Now the reverse is if you came down on the right side and you had something you wanted in there because you had created a style and it wasn't showing up, right click, add to quick style gallery. Okay? So you can uh, remove as well as add to your quick style gallery. Okay? And then you can create your template and that's that's your style gallery right there. Okay? So that would be another. And then your workbook template. Um, quick caveat here. There are a number of uh, advanced things that you can do with workbook templates where basically the idea is you're putting that in a location uh, on the server where now multiple people can access that. Okay? Now again, I, I wanted to was hoping to kind of demo that, um, but the idea is um, once that's set up, then multiple people who have permissions can access that template and be able to work from there. What I want to stress is that there are a number of things that you can do on a uh, advanced level that certainly might involve your IT department. 
you know, within a company, within a corporate setup. Okay, so sometimes it's a matter of, geez, we'd love to do this, uh, but IT might have to get involved, and that's just uh, that's a, obviously a reality. Okay, so how can we ask, uh, access the normal template? Uh, I I went through that process, but real quick, the why? Well. Yes, you might want to open it to change it. The other thing is you might want to back up that normal. And that's actually a very good process uh, to do in general. Okay? Going in, backing up that, uh, that file, and making sure that if anything is, believe it or not, uh, files as well as templates can absolutely become corrupted. Okay? Uh, and that's one of IT's most common things in Word is to uh, reset a corrupted normal template happens. It, it absolutely happens. Okay. Um, how do you attach a template to an existing Word document? Okay. And then how do you attach a template to an existing Word document every time Word loads? I'm going to show you real quick where you would go. Okay. Back to that developer tab to document template. Okay. And it's right here attach. The biggest question that comes up is what happens if I have a template and I attach another new template to that? Okay. Well, what's going to happen is visually nothing. Okay. What will happen is the new template will actually be sitting there in the background, okay, ready to offer up the things that a template can offer. Okay, so going back to that. So what happens if you attach a new template to an existing document? Nothing changes in the document. The newly attached template will sit in the background and make available four things the templates can make available to documents. Macros, auto text, building blocks, toolbars, UI customization, keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so you're not going to lose from the initial document that will sit in the background. Okay. All right. Couple gotchas real quick, because I know, I know we're we're really at wrap up time here. Um, it's, it's amazing how fast uh, a half hour goes by. Um, couple quick gotchas. Uh, you change the normal template because that's the technique that you want to go with. Um, you do an upgrade and Word replaces in the process of the upgrade the normal template. Okay, So keep it in the back of your mind. Know that that could happen Okay, if you do it. Um, now the second one actually really ties into a very common misnomer. Um, you send the file off to somebody else and everything changes. They literally get the document and everything changes. Okay, Well, if you send the file and your file is based on normal template, okay, and somebody checked the update styles checkbox, okay, then that's exactly what's going to happen because they have a normal template, okay. The document goes out, looks for normal template, but update styles was checked, so the entire document is going to change to update based on their normal template, not your normal template. And that happens, again, very frequently. So if that checkbox is checked, okay, go back to the developer, okay right here. This checkbox can be a really fantastic, great option, and it can cause exactly the problem that I talked about. Automatically update document styles. Okay, All that means is that if you make a document based on a template, and then you go into the template and you change the styles, you're saying, I want the new documents that are based on a template to also change. 
Now you can imagine that in certain workflows that can be a fantastic, wonderful feature. That can be a huge gotcha. That can have a ripple effect. Okay, so this becomes a very important decision in terms of uh, uh, work groups and workflows. Is that a behavior that we want? Is that going to benefit us, or should we stay away from that? Okay. So I want to make sure I just touch on that real quick, and I think we're definitely at our time. So the last couple slides here real quick. Uh, why styles? Consistency. Uh, easier to modify. Efficiency. Table of contents are built on them. Faster navigation. Uh, works in outline view based on the styles. And efficiency of word. Now this is cool. Most people don't think about this, but when you have manual overrides for formatting, Word actually has to work harder. Okay? It has to go to the styles, then it has to go and see that there's a manual override, and that actually, especially in the long document, believe it or not, can actually add a lot of processing power, um, and especially if you kind of find things being sluggish. So, okay? All right, quick reminders. If you're creating a Word template, uses a letter inserted date field that will update automatically each time the template is open. Fantastic time saver. Um, create letters, include your address and contact information. Headers and footers, um, use fields or auto text for information that may change. Okay? Um, any text will be included in all documents based on the template. Column, margin, tab stops, endnotes, footnotes. Uh, macros, okay? if you want to use specific macros, include them in the template. Some options may involve your IT department, and man, I could go on. <laughs> I could go on and on and on. Um, love to be able to demo more. Uh, bottom line, guys, if first of all, I really hope there were some things there that um, you weren't aware of, open optimized, uh, gave you some ideas um, to even investigate further, even if it's just oh, that would be something I want to look into deeper. Um, if that's great for you, fantastic. If you think that and many other areas I'd love to explore in more depth, uh, we certainly teach for 7, 10, 13, three different levels of Word. Okay? There's a level 1, 2, and 3, and it pretty much takes you through just about everything. And certainly the great thing about being in a classroom environment uh, is that the, uh, the instructor is there. Uh, so these, these are very quick targeted, um, but uh, you know, if, uh, if you got the instructor there and you have really specific questions, the instructors are, are fantastic. I mean, they're, they're great and always more than happy to help you out. Okay? As I said, as I promised, uh, that is my email address, my personal email address okay, for work. Um, if there was a burning question, um, something that you really wanted to, uh, to clarify, um, I have absolutely no problem. If you want to reach out, I'd be more than happy to hear from you, and um, uh, we we'll go from there. So thank you guys very much. It was a pleasure. I uh, hope you guys had a great experience, and um, I think uh, I think Anthony might uh, pop on real quick.